Hey folks, Bridges here. Um, I told you I was going to make another video on how to estimate the weight or mass of your 3D print by using the slicing software. So here we go. This slicing software is called Creality Slicer. It's based on an open source slicing software called Cura, C-U-R-A. Um, and most of the slicing, slicers out there do, they are based on Cura. Um, so what we have here is uh, we've got a profile set up to our particular machine right here. You can go in and add printers or manage and change the printer that you're currently using. Um, but by selecting a, a printer from the profile here, it, uh, it gives you a specified height, width, and depth of your printable area. Um, up here, we've got some different options. So if you click on um, really any of, these, any of this menu up here, it brings up the print settings. Okay, and in the print settings, there's lots of options that you can change. Generally, the only ones that I mess around with are the um, the infill from time to time, but I usually leave that alone. The really the, the important ones are toggling on or off support, meaning if you need um, if you have like overhangs or bridging, you can turn that on to to make sure that they're they are supported, and then also um, the print plate the build plate adhesion type. And basically, if you have a, a smaller model or something without much, much area on the bottom, you might think about placing either a brim or a raft um, <clears throat> build plate adhesion to help that first layer stick to the build plate. Um, for now, we're 3D printing um, battle bots, and they're pretty big, so we're not going to use any extra adhesion to help hold it down. All right, so once we're in here, this is a picture of your build space on your 3D printer. And it's pretty simple. We're going to click on the open file icon and we are going to navigate our downloads uh, until we find the STL model that we want to print. And in this case, it was EA2 BattleBot V1. So uh, we'll click open. You can um, move around by right clicking and dragging on your um, environment. You can scroll in and out with your mouse wheel. And um, with your model selected, so just single click it, you can you can move it um, X, Y, and Z. You can scale it X, Y, and Z. You can rotate it about X, Y, or Z. And you can even do some other things in here. Okay, but really those top three are the ones. Um, rotating is probably the most important one. You want you want it oriented in a way such, at, such that your flat bottom is on the bottom of the print surface. And um, we wanna try to avoid as many overhangs and things like that as possible. And there are some other rules of thumb to follow, um, but for now, uh, to just getting started, let's just keep it at that. Try to avoid the overhangs in the support material and flat goes on the bottom. Okay, so once we're there, um, it's just go ahead and hit slice. And it's gonna take in a minute. Um, the program basically turns it into a bunch of layers because the 3D printer can't just, um, it can't just push out a, a big, already built a file, it, you know, it does layer by layer. So once we're done with the slicing, uh, we can click on preview if you want to see something cool. Uh, and it does actually show you a preview of what that print is going to look like. So um, down at the bottom is the play button for a for a particular layer. And right now I'm on the top layer. So this is what the last layer is going to look like. And you can see it going in here and tracing and doing its thing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause that and go to the end of that layer. You can see it laying down it's 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 um that was the top layer over on the right it tells me there are a total of 254 layers so i can roll that back in time and see what it looks like all the way down through the process okay so i'm gonna keep on rolling it back so you can see starting with layer one it's going to be at the plain bottom and it's going to build up and up and up and this is what it's going to look like over time on the 3d printer pretty cool right and there's your final product so once it's done with the preview, um, and you don't have to preview it, by the way, you can just stay and prepare the whole time. Um, it is important that we hit save to file. Okay, and it saves it as something called G code, whereas it used to be an STL. Now it is sliced into 254 individual drawings, basically on top of one another, and it's called G code. So we're gonna give it the same name, EA2 BattleBot. Instead of STL this time, however, it's G-code. So we just go ahead and hit save and it saves it. Now, uh, for these particular 3D printers, um, they come with a little, uh, you can't see my screen right now. 
they come with a little micro SD card and a card reader that you would need to plug into your um, computer and transfer the file from the downloads file onto the SD card, which you would then load into the printer and hit print. Okay, for us, um, for this video, we're not gonna worry about that. Before we sign off here, I wanted to draw your attention to um, this little icon down here at the bottom, the little print preview. This is an estimate. It says it's going to take 15 hours and 56 minutes, basically 16 hours to print this battle bot. It says it's going to be a hundred or it's going to take 107 grams of filament. And that's approximately 35.98 meters in length of one strand of filament. If I click the eye right here, it gives me more information, including um, how much of that is going to be infill time, how much of that is going to be walls, so on and so forth. But our total is we're looking at roughly 107 grams. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.